welcome it is uh, uh, it is the module 3 and the first lecture on the aerodynamics in blast furnace and this will be the part 1 and uh, i will require another uh, that is the part 2 and part 3 may be required to complete this aerodynamics in blast furnace okay now what are the importance of aerodynamics in blast furnace that is the concept that will be covered here is the importance of aerodynamics in blast furnace and uh, what is the definition of pressure drop in blast furnace and how to calculate the pressure drop in blast furnace and the effect of various particle size void age and mean spread on pressure drop. So, these are the four items that will be covered in this lecture. <coughs> now, importance what is the importance of aerodynamics in the blast furnace? Basically, the aerodynamics defines the gas distribution in the bed and is a very important parameter in blast furnace gas distribution because for utilizing the gas potential, both the thermal and chemical potential, we need a intense interaction between the gas and the solid that is the upcoming gas and the solid that is coming down. They should have a very intimate interaction such that the chemical and thermal potential of the gas is utilized to the maximum extent. And how it can be ensured? It can be ensured if we have a very uniform bed permeability across the cross section of the bed. That means if the gas can pass through the uh, across the cross section uniformly, then it will be able to interact with the most of the solid. Rather, if the gas passes through some channels of least resistance, then the particles those are in the little in the region where the gas cannot penetrate. So, there the solid will not participate into the gas solid exchange both the heat and the mass exchange. As a result, we cannot uh, extract the chemical and thermal potential of the gas. So, bed permeability is a very important parameter in blast furnace both in the solid zone and in the liquid region in the wet zone of the blast furnace. So, and these aerodynamics basically helps in predicting what type of gas distribution in a blast furnace we have or we can expect. And how and it becomes more important if we want to produce more that is if we want to increase the productivity then aerodynamic study of aerodynamics become more important you can see why because if I want to define the productivity it is defined as that is the coke throughput that is the amount of coke that I am burning per unit time divided by the coke rate that is the amount of the coke that I am charging per ton of hot metal. So, if you see the ratio then it is simply give you ton of hot metal per hour ok that is the productivity. So, productivity is defined in terms of Q by K where Q is the uh, your gas uh, that is the gas throughput then there is the coke throughput coke throughput means there is the amount of coke I am burning per unit time and K is the coke rate that is the kg of coke I am burning per ton of hot metal anyway. So, now see and uh, higher productivity requires obviously if I want to do the very high productivity. So, I have to have a very high Q value Q means I have to burn more coke per unit time because if I burn more coke per unit time then I can only produce I can melt more amount of iron per unit time. So, Q has to be high and your denominator that is the coke rate has to be low that is to produce 1 ton of hot metal uh, I must require minimum amount of the coke then only I can increase the productivity right. Now, the C for both the cases that is the if I want to have a lower coke rate it requires a better utilization of the thermal and chemical potential of the gas because if I can utilize the gas most effectively obviously my coke rate will decrease. If I cannot effectively utilize that means the sum of the gas without participating or without interacting with the solid if it can pass through the blast furnace and go away out of the blast furnace obviously, we are not utilizing the potential of the gas in that case your coke rate will increase. 
the to cook it means to produce one ton of hot metal how much cook is required okay so obviously that is the lower cook rate requires your better utilization of the gas better bed permeability and for that you need to study the aerodynamics right and the higher cook throughput on the time on the other hand what will happen it also increase the blast throughput if you want to burn more amount of coke you have to give more amount of air blast and if you want to increase the more amount of air blast that is the gas flow or the linear velocity of the gas in the blast furnace will increase and that will also increase the resistance in the blast furnace so it will increase the pressure drop in the blast furnace right and high pressure drop in the blast furnace can lead to different irregularities in the blast furnace mainly called the channeling channeling is a phenomena when the gas try to pass away through the blast furnace through some selected channels right so that is called the channeling some selected channel if the gas want to pass through or flooding can take place in the wet zone of the blast furnace where the liquid can be pushed up into the uh, solid region okay up into the solid region low temperature solid region as a result the liquid can solidify form an arc and form a solid boundary and that may not allow the gas to pass through this solid boundary okay so that is the condition of hanging that can take place that is it is called that blast furnace refuses to take air that means air cannot pass through the above the cohesive zone because where what happens because the liquid has gone into the low temperature solid region and it has been solidified and it is obstructing the passage of the gas it can happen that is called the hanging okay so these are the situation that is if you want to increase the productivity then this channeling hanging these are the phenomena can happen unless you take care of the aerodynamics in the blast furnace that's why the aerodynamics is quite important in blast furnace and aerodynamics is usually characterized by the measurement of pressure drop in the blast furnace and in any modern blast furnace you have number of probes which are measuring the pressure drop both in the radial cross section as well as axial distance across the so any axial distance as well as radial cross section you can calculate the pressure drop and this distribution of pressure basically gives you or give you an idea about the instantaneous aerodynamics in the blast furnace and accordingly you can uh, uh, change your burden distribution you can change the raw material such that you can bring the furnace in a proper position okay in a good uh, operating condition so now aerodynamics in pressure uh, that is the in, in a pack bed reactor basically blast furnace is a pack bed reactor is somewhat like a pack bed reactor uh where basically you have lot of granules is there and the gas is passing through the pores of the granules without shifting the particles that is the idea it should be a perfectly fixed bed reactor so in the fixed bed reactor what do you mean by the pressure drop in the blast furnace pressure drop is basically hmm, if you consider the blast furnace as a black box like a just a packed bed and its pressure at the bottom is p1 at the top is p2 then the pressure drop is simply p1 minus p2 that is called the pressure drop delta p is equal to p1 minus p2 and this pressure drop you can calculate by what is called the argon equation this is called the argon equation that i have written you can calculate the pressure drop by using a equation called the argon equation the genesis of argon equation is that that is the pressure drop across the furnace is directly proportional to the mass flow rate proportional to the linear velocity okay and there is a proportionality constant that is called the friction factor and for flow through a smooth pipe you have some friction factor for flow through a packed bed in case of the flow through a packed bed basically your uh, channels there are a number of small tortuous channels through which the gas pass through okay and uh, as a result and in the pack bed uh, you have um, um, that is the velocity inside the pack bed then you can correlate so basically the pressure drop per unit length is directly proportional to the linear velocity mass flow rate and as well as the uh, weighted surface area right 
in the process. And if you just convert the velocity, actual velocity in the pack in the pack bit with the superficial gas velocity, then you can get this type of correlation. Basically, if you correlate the uh, your actual velocity with the superficial glass, gas velocity, void age, particle diameter, you get the Argon equation. And the friction factor finally, you can calculate from empirical correlation. So, there is a very nice empirical correlation based on several experimental data Argon has calculated and uh, that is the correlation. It is a very universal correlation psi is equal to 1.75 plus 150 by modified Reynolds number. Okay. So, this is the definition of the psi that is the friction factor empirical correlation. It is based on rigorous experimental data and very well accepted one. right? And uh, this is the friction factor for the pack bit. And the Reynolds number you can find that is the modified Reynolds number is given as REM is equal to G naught D by mu 1 minus epsilon where G naught is equal to basically rho naught U naught where you have seen that the G naught basically the mass flow rate is the mass flow rate and W naught is the superficial gas velocity. It is defined as normal meter cube per meter square per second. right? So, by knowing the superficial gas velocity, mass flow rate, you can calculate uh, and this temperature term that you can find there, there is the some temperature term here you are find here. This temperature and the pressure term basically this is the correction for uh, the volume of the gas inside the blast furnace. right? So, because I am uh, W naught is basically normal meter cube. So, inside the blast furnace the volume will change. So, that is taken care of by T by T naught and P naught by P. right? So, this is the equation very well known equation called the Argon equation and using which you can calculate the pressure drop in the blast furnace. Show you how to calculate the, this pressure drop and the several underburden probes are there as I said in the axial and radial distance, radial uh, position in the blast furnace to measure the local pressure and that gives the actual scenario of uh, that is the experimental data that is the experimental pressure measurement systems are there that gives you. And if you want to calculate the pressure drop this Argon equation also can be used to calculate the pressure drop from different parameters of the bed. So, here is basically one example how to calculate the pressure drop in the dry zone of a blast furnace. Okay. And uh, blast furnace gas temperature is given, gas flow rate is given, gas density is given, viscosity at 1000 degree centigrade is given, particle diameter, void age, average pressure everything is given. And you have to calculate the pressure drop. Also, you calculate the pressure drop at 0.35 and compare with that of value at void is 0.25. Let us see if we can. And I just give you this example. And you can see the calculate first you calculate the modified Reynolds number that is G naught is equal to rho naught W naught, rho naught is the density. Okay. And uh, everything I have converted to the because uh, CGS system to the IS uh, that is the international standard okay. that is the MKS system converted CGS to MKS system you convert and then you can calculate it. So, rho naught into W naught gives you the G naught this value is coming around 1.67 kg per meter square second. And then you can calculate the Reynolds number and all the value we just put and then you can get 1856 and then calculate the friction factor is coming around 1.83. Then you can calculate the pressure drop per unit length that is the friction factor multiplied by 1 minus epsilon by epsilon cube d. Just put all the values and then you can find this value that is this much of Newton per meter square per meter of the bed per height of the bed. And then you divide by 9.8 into 1000, just you convert it to the meter of water per meter of the bed and then you can find this is basically 11.1 millimeter of water per centimeter of the bed. So, then you can calculate. So, in a typical uh, blast furnace, the pressure drop is of the order of 10 millimeter of water per centimeter of bed when the voidage, if the voidage in the bed is 0.25. Here, I have taken the voidage as 0.25 that is the very, I will not say very open bit. So, now let us calculate. So, then it is a very high pressure drop around 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter of water per centimeter of the bed. So, if I now do it, if I want to calculate the pressure drop at the voidage of 0 
then you can simply do that in this way because here basically only I am uh, ignoring the effect of void edge in calculation of the Reynolds number. Otherwise, uh, uh, there is the void edge and pressure drop is related by this and you can find that pressure drop at 0 0.35 to 0 0.225, it is of, the, of a factor of 0 0.3 that is uh, factor of 0.3. So, now the, you can see pressure drop per unit length at a voltage of 0.35 comes around 3.49, 3.5 millimeter of water per centimeter of bed compared to 11 millimeter of water per centimeter of bed when it was, when the voltage was 0.25. So, so pressure drop per unit length is very sensitive to the voltage, very sensitive to the voltage. So, from this diagram also you can see some idea that is the effect of voltage and particle size on the pressure drop. This is the pressure drop and the gas velocity and you can see that this line is with the voltage of 0.4 and this solid line is a voltage of 0.3, this solid line is a voltage of 0.2 and if we compare the pressure drop say when the voltage is 0.4 this is the pressure drop and this pressure drop is of the order of this is the 0.01. 0 to 0 0.04, 0 0.06, 0 0.08, approximately this is the 0 0.08, okay, uh, millimeter of water per centimeter of the bed at 0.4, when the uh, voltage is 0.4, 40 percent voltage. Now, when it is 30 percent voltage here, when you come, then the pressure drop become approximately that is the 0.2 millimeter of water per centimeter of bed, right, this is here millimeter of water per centimeter of bed and we are coming here 0.2. So, you can find for a given size if the voltage decreases by 0 0.1 say 0 0.4 to 0 0.3 the pressure drop increases by 2, 2 to 3 times it is around 2.5 times it comes from here to here. So, 2.3 to 2.2 to 3 times approximately and the change in change is more staggering when the voltage is low. That is, if I want to go from 0.3 to 0.2, voltage of 0.3 to 0.2, then this is around 3 to 4 times. So, you can see there is the voltage had a very significant effect on the pressure drop and the effect of particle diameter, you can see particle diameter also, also have a very uh, effect on the gas distribution, you can see relative resistance to the flow, this is the relative resistance to the flow. When the particle size is uh, less than 3 millimeter, say this point, there is a 3 millimeter, when the particle size is less than 3 millimeter, then you can see relative resistance to flow exponentially increases, right here, heat transfer, mass transfer, resistance also increases exponentially, okay. So, when the particle size below 3 to 4 millimeter, then the resistance become very high, but at when the particle size is greater than that, then particle size do not have much effect on the pressure drop. That is in the blast furnace we use particle size of the order of 20 millimeter to 40 millimeter root size. So, that does not uh, influence the heat and mass transfer, at least the particle diameter does not have much effect uh, on the heat and mass transfer as well as on the relative resistance to flow all on the on the pressure drop also. Now, we see the effect of mixed layers is very important because in the blast furnace we charge uh, skip of ore and then coke and ore and coke, but eventually you can find that the near the coke and ore interface there is a mixed layer formation is evident because that will mix up to some extent. And these are the data from a laboratory scale mixed bit and the layered bed data. Basically, in the laboratory scale experiment, we have calculated the dimensionless pressure drop in a fixed bed, dimensionless pressure drop in a fixed step versus the volume ratio. That is the, this is basically these values you can find, that is the fine fraction. You can say fine fraction. If you increase the fraction of the fines and how the dimensionless pressure drop changes in a packed bed reactor. So, what you can find when it is a layered that is if you have fine one layer of fine and one layer of coarse, one layer of fine, one layer of coarse with a very sharp interface if you can maintain it is possible to maintain you just in a laboratory scale you can maintain is because the particles are not moving down. When the particles are moving them they mix up, but otherwise you can give fine and then coarse and then the fine and coarse you can give it 
and uh, they will not mix up to a great extent. So, if you have a layer structure, then it is fine that if you increase the volume fraction of the fines, okay, obviously, if you increase the volume fraction of fines in a layer structure, that is the more fines than that of the codes, okay. So, then in the layer structure, pressure drop increases as you increase the fines, uh, but it linearly increases, right, from here to here. But when the fine and the codes are mixed up, then you can find there is a shooting up of the pressure drop at certain volume fraction of the fines. So, 30 to 40 percent volume fraction of fines, you can find that there is a shooting up of the pressure drop. In a mixed bed, the pressure drop suddenly shoots up and when the fine fraction is 30 to 40 percent, right. So, this is a very important observation from here. The pressure drop increase several folds several folds for mixed bed compared to layer 1. Layer bed not that much. In mixed bed the pressure drop passes through a maximum that I showed with increase in the fine fraction and the maximum attains at around 30 to 40 percent of the fine fraction. And pressure drop is very sensitive to the size difference between the fine and the coarse particle. You can find that when the ds by dl is the diameter ratio. So, when there is a huge difference between the fine and the coarse, right, you have then you can see staggering increase in the pressure drop. And when the diameter ratio is 0.2, then there is an increase, but that is not staggering. And when it is 0.5, then this is. And if you calculate in the blast furnace, what happens? The ore size and coarse size, ore size is usually 40 millimeter, the average ore size is 40 millimeter average coke size is 90 millimeter and in that case your O2 coke size ratio is around 0 0.44, so very close to 0 0.5. So, if there is a mixed bed formation is also there, then the pressure drop is, go is increasing in the mixed bed, but not that very significant, okay, that is there, that is there, but not very significant. So, this staggering increase in the pressure drop only when the fine to coarse diameter ratio become very difference become very large okay so otherwise in the blast furnace when the difference is 40 to 90 millimeter then it doesn't make that much of change so we should not be bothered about the mixed bed in the blast furnace because of mixed bed formation in the blast furnace the pressure drop increase will be there obviously but not very great okay so that thing uh, that that's why I'm telling in this range the pressure drop does not shoot up much. So the ratio cannot be increased by any further considering the operation at the lower part of the blast furnace. Think is that that is I have to I cannot make the ore size and coke size almost equal. If I can make it is always better because for the blast furnace probability, uh, but uh, we cannot do that because we have to keep a little bigger coke size. Because when the coke is coming down, it is obviously one thing is that it is uh, degrading because of carbon gasification reaction beyond 1000 degree centigrade. It undertakes parts in the carbon gasification, so its size is decreasing. But when it is reaching in the cohesive zone, then its size should be high, okay, or the specific surface area should be low. Because if the specific surface area is high, it will be weighted by the uh, chances of weighted by the liquid the chance will be more, okay. So, basically the it is required that is the coke size should be high when it reaches the cohesive zone well, because it is the coke that only allows the gas passage and, uh, and the specific surface area should not be very high to restrict the weighting of, weighting of the coke in the lower part that we will see later on that is, that is the very important thing is there. So, this is about this the pressure drop. So, what we get uh, this is the only reference is that equivicious you can uh, we have taken only from the equivicious. What are the conclusion major conclusions are aerodynamics defines the gas distribution in the blast furnace only from this part I will have a second part on the aerodynamics in blast furnace also. Aerodynamics is characterized by the pressure drop in the furnace and pressure drop is very sensitive to the gas voidage especially at lower voidage is very sensitive to that. And for mixed bed, the pressure drop passes through a maximum at around 30 to 40 volume percent of smaller particle and becomes significant with increase in difference between the smaller and the coarse particle. 
But fortunately, in the blast furnace, the size difference between ore and coke is not very high, where the pressure drop can be alarmingly. Pressure drop can alarm around if the pressure drop can increase or shoot up very large. So it doesn't do because the uh, diameter ratio ore and coke is not very high. Okay, it is of the order of 0.4 to 0.5. So that's why you don't have to be bothered, I mean, panicky about this uh, size distribution. And effect effect of particle size on the pressure drop becomes staggering below the 3 to 4 millimeter. If the particle size less than 3 to 4 millimeter, then uh, the effect become very staggering. Okay, so this is what we learned from the part one of aerodynamics. So now in the next ne next lecture, we will consider about the channeling and flooding that is the two irregularities in the blast furnace that take place. Channeling take place in the upper part of the blast furnace and the flooding take place in the weight zone of the blast furnace. Channeling basically where the gas passes through some selected channels because the pressure distribution is so non-uniform and it leads to channeling and gas finds the easy passes through the least the zone of least resistance. So it, it, it finds some selected channels through which it passes through that is called channeling and in that case gas utilization become very less. In the lower part weight zone also flooding take place, they are basically the gas uh, pushes the liquid in the low temperature region and it solidify and it does not then solidify it, it forms an arch type of thing and it does not allow the gas to pass through this region okay so that is called the flooding or hanging so we'll come into the next lecture thank you very much